our planet is alive, it's physically alive, it started out dead. It had a fuel, not hydrogen, but radioactivity. It began to heat on the inside shortly after formation. It began to rumble. The core melted, formed the core, gave us a magnetic field that protects us from solar radiation, the plasma. And then the melting in the outer half of the Earth and the mantle. I'm melting, I'm melting! Liquids are compressible. Under highest pressure, they sink, they're dense. But under lower pressure, they actually expand like helium. And up they go. And the parts of the mantle that melted first, which where water or carbon dioxide are both warm because they lower the melting temperature of rock. And so magma, magma, <coughs> melting of the Earth inherently rich in volatiles, carbon dioxide, and water. And so those magmas in the outer half of the Earth are light, they're buoyant, they expanded, and up they go, crashing the first earthquakes, breaking their way. There's two kinds of earthquakes on Earth. And one I just described, it's volcanic, rising magma, breaking its way through, breaking its way through. The first, the first, first earthquakes were happening, and then the lava spewed out, forming the crust, bubbling, bubbling, bubbling out all of those volatiles, carbon dioxide and water. Our Earth had the perfect size, it gave it gravity, and it would held on to those gases. Our first atmosphere, an atmosphere of carbon dioxide, sulfur and water, that's carbonic and sulfuric gases, but those clouds <coughs> rained, we formed our first oceans, and in those first oceans, life began as one cell microbes of algae and fungi, simple, simple life, extreme life, all right? The beginnings of it all. So I told you, you came to Earth as a shooting star, you came out through a volcano, and you began, you began its life on the bottom of the Earth's oceans in hostile, hot environments more than two miles down. Wow. So the story of our planet. Let's get out your clickers, and let's see how well you learn now this is Tuesday, you just had the lecture you're going to get examined on on Thursday. That was a long time ago. Yeah, all right, let's see how well we do. Bye, mamas and papas. Okay, I've recessed the slides. Response devices, auto. May not work. Help. <coughs> Help. <coughs> Are we setting the sides again? Oh, bad news bears. <laughs> See that toolbox up there blinking? That's really bad. <laughs> Help! <coughs> Try one more time. Again, we may have to do this manually. Real exam questions.
the radioactive fuel of Earth is hydrogen, uranium, thorium, and potassium, coal, petroleum, and natural gas, iron, and nickel are none of the above. Wait, wait, don't do it, don't get ready, get ready, get ready. Click away, you're clicking, wow, look at those clickers go, woo woo. What are you gonna say? I wonder if I taught you well or no. Okay, count down. 41. How do you know what channel you're on? I don't know. <laughs> but a lot of you, 111, let's keep them going. Holes closed. And the correct answer is, you said B. And that's the correct answer. Way to go. All right. Real exam questions. Take a picture of it. Relative to the age of the earth. The fraction of time that humans have existed is 50%, 25, 12, 1, or 0.04. The polls are now open. You got it. All right, we're doing review all the time. Some people say, are you going to do a review session? We're doing it right now. All right, so you can assess how well you are learning relative to your classmates. There goes the countdown. Rock and roll. Okay, and you said, I know I told, wow, 97%. I only told you that number twice, but you did good. All right, it's sticking. That's pretty cool. Early heating of the earth formed the cord mantle, melted iron and some nickel, led to the formation of the magnetic field, occurred soon after planetary formation, all of the above. What do you think? Might be the right answer. <coughs> now you're having to think a bit, not as easy as true false. Click away and I'll start the countdown. There we go. Hey, get on in here. How many of you don't have a clicker yet? Go get your clickers. 3% of your grade, okay, whether you do it right or wrong. And you said a lot of you like all of the above. And I have to tell you, I often use all of the above. And there's a good example. Uh, that check mark is in the wrong position. It is all the above. <laughs> I just got to move it down. All right, let's try it again. Early life on Earth began in the oceans, dates back to at least 3.8 billion years, was once one celled bacteria and algae, thrived near seafloor plate boundaries, and all of the above. Okay, I now open it. <coughs> And what you're doing is that you're imprinting here. Even if you get the wrong answer, you're going to see the right answer, and that's going to help you imprint. Okay? So there you go. You clicked away. I do the countdown. Ten, nine. All right. Four, three, two. Some of you are still thinking. And now you said, guess what? <laughs> All of the above. You're going to remember that? Yeah, all right, the value of being in class, and you're here. The Cretaceous tertiary extinction was caused by asteroid impact, led to the end of the age of reptiles, led to the beginning of the age of mammals, occurred at 66 million years ago, or all of the above. Okay, what are you gonna do? Fire away, fire away. Click, 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 click. Clack, clack. Click and clack. There you go. And the countdown is, there it is, seven, six. Take a picture of it. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you get it right or wrong, but let's find out what you did. Okay, you split a bit more, but most of you like all of the above. And that's the correct answer. That check mark is just misplaced, okay? Was that our biggest extinction? No. No. What was, the, what was the boundary that was our biggest extinction? <laughs> Permian Triassic. And probably caused by huge amounts of volcanism, where the Earth just turned over with lots of volcanoes. Uh, a lot, largely basalt, largely on land. Okay. <coughs> Humans on Earth as Homo sapien, uh, date back to two million years, did not have a population of about one billion until the year 1830, merged during the Ice Age, 
settled the Americas during the last 15,000 years and all of the above. And I have to adjust that top one. As, ho as the genus Homo, not Sapiens. Sapiens started recent. So to make that one a correct answer, I would have to say as the genus Homo date back to two million years, okay? So A is correct. What are you going to do with the rest? And you said, now you can punch, now you can punch. Look how fast you go. I know you're here. I know how you're responding. And I'm really pleased with the results, particularly for a class that was four days ago. And countdown. So first labs this week. What do you do if you find yourself ill and you can't get to your chosen lab? Go to another one by writing one email to two persons, right? Your TF and the TF you want to go to. And you can get that on the syllabus. And you said a lot of you all the above, and that's correct. The current human population on our planet is, there they are. What do you think? What? There they are. What's the correct answer? Shoot away. Shoot away. If you get it wrong, you're going to see the right one. And you're going to be golden. <coughs> All right, countdown. It's a different countdown. How many of us are there? You've been very successful reproducing. The polls are closed. You said <coughs> B. And well, guess what? Correct answer? Great. All right. Okay. Do I want to save that? No. No. And here's the session data where I have your information. There it goes. All right. PowerPoint cells go together and are up welding, up welding, and that causes rifting and continents to be torn asunder, rifted apart, East Africa rifting apart, creating new ocean basins. The next cell, so that one's going, yeah, yeah, that one's going this way, so now the next two cells over are doing what? They're colliding! And so what was once an ocean is now closing, I've got a subduction zone, land approaching each other, Given us, when it's like this, the most violent earthquakes, the most abundant earthquakes, and the greatest volcanic eruptions when they come like that. Okay, so one after the other, plate tectonics and earthquakes. Let's take a look at this. But uh, wait, how many of you, jokingly we call you earth virgins, have never felt an earthquake? Oh, 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 there's a whole lot of you. 
<laughs> Never felt the earth move. <laughs> I, in California, I've had times when I'm teaching the very first class just like this one, and I'll take a poll, and then a half hour later, we had an earthquake, and all those hands came down. <laughs> <laughs> so you missed the one in August down in Virginia. But some of you, how many of you felt the one in August? <coughs> oh, yeah. How many of you, that was your first earthquake? <laughs> All right, felt the earth move up. The rest of you, you wait, it'll come along, I just know it. Look at that. Sumatra, part of Indonesia, sitting above a subduction zone, powerful earthquakes, tsunamis created when you, when you move the earth under the oceans. You're shoving a great volume of water toward land. It's not a surface wave that's created by wind. It's the whole ocean floor involved in that wave. And as it gets to shallow water, that wave has no, nowhere to go but up, 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 lifting and carrying hundreds of miles an hour. Look out. So we'll see that, see that today. So our planet is alive, physically alive, and biologically alive. If we didn't have earthquakes and volcanoes, you would not be here. You may feel quite safe in Boston, Massachusetts, but look out. You're going to the entire earth. You're going to walk out of good old BU someday, graduate with honors, find a job, and the whole world is yours. And it's alive. It's alive out there. All right? So look out. Uh, the asthenosphere is called that because asthenos, it's a sphere. There's a sphere inside our earth that is mobile all the way around. It's mobile, convecting. It's about 5% melt, and it's convecting like you heat, you have cold stew on a stove, and as you heat it, it begins to what? Get down, it begins to convect. Before it boils, it begins to convect and move, all right? And above that asthenosphere, we have an outer surface of our planet. It's called lithosphere. Lithos means rock, so it's an outer sphere that includes the crust and the uppermost mantle that is floating and moving on the, the convecting asthenosphere, at times going together and smashing, at other times drifting apart, at other times sliding past each other, our three kinds of plate boundaries. The Earth's outer lithosphere is broken into 14 plates, some really big, like the Pacific Plate, and some really small, like the Caribbean. All right? Uh, the plates are all under stress. Even if I went to Iowa, which is not on a plate boundary, and <coughs> drilled a hole, that hole would collapse just a bit. It's no longer a perfect circle because the earth is under stress. Stress. It's feeling everything, everything. All right? When we go fracking for natural gas in Oklahoma, we cause the earth under stress, it's lubricated and it shifts, and it, 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 these induced earthquakes. Three types of plate boundaries. Divergent, where we make spreading ridges. Convergent, subduction zones. And then sliding past one another, transform faults. We'll do more of that uh, in a bit. So where did all this come from? Well, the idea that the Earth's plates might have been moving originated with the theory of continental drift. <laughs> Alfred Wegener, 1915, Alfred Wegener, I mean, people had long noticed that the Earth's continents looked like they could have fitted together. I mean, think about the Atlantic fitting with Europe and South America fitting with, with Africa. Now, look at that perfect fit. People had long recognized that. But Alfred Wegener went further. He said, yeah, I think they could have fitted together, but he proved it. He found the same fossils, the same fossils, there they are. Here's Alfred Wegener. What you got in that pipe, Alfred? <laughs> so he proposed that there was a Pangea that rifted and broke up. And as it rifted, the northern mass he called Laurasia, and the southern mass he called Gondwana. And he died. He failed. I mean, his proof was that he stitched it together with rocks. He found the same fossils, a reptile that could not have possibly swum across the ocean on both sides, and the same plants. He had it rocked. He did it with fossils. He did it with ages of rocks. He did it with rock type. I took this picture in Durban, South Africa. It's a quarry of a glacial till like 300 million years old. That same rock, look up close. There it is. 
It looks a lot like your putting stone conglomerate or in the Roxbury conglomerate here in Pas uh, Pasadena, in Boston. All right, pebbles all by themselves, surrounded by a lighter matrix, dropped by icebergs. And he found this same rock. This is in South Africa. Same rock in South America, in India. Wow. Uh, Antarctica. Wow. And yet, he could not explain how. He could not write it down. Are you engaged? Could not write. He could not find a mechanism. What do you mean the continents move? Are you going to shove them through the oceans like they were boats? I don't know. He was thinking differently. You know, we're not very nice to people that think differently. It's something about diversity that humans are scared of. If one of us wears their hat backwards, we laugh at them. Well, not really, but do something different. If you're a little bit different, we're, the others are cautious with you, aren't they? We're not nice. I want you all to embrace diversity. Well, he did not get embraced. He says, all right. He was laughed out of the halls of science. He was a southern hemisphere geologist. And the northern hemisphere geologist, and in London, and in New York, and Paris, laughed at him. You fool, the, boat. the continents are not boats. And so he says, all right, I'll go into your hemisphere. And he started working on connecting Greenland to North America, and Greenland to the United Kingdom. And he was right. His boat went down, and he died in his quest. But there was his ice cap. That was Pangea before it broke up into Gondwana land and Laurasia. So at two world wars later, the mechanism was found. C4 spreading, and it goes to a Princeton, New Jersey professor named Harold Hess. We, World War II created the field of oceanography which belongs not just to geology, but also parts of chemistry and physics and biology to study the world's oceans. Because we were at war, submarines became really important. We found, as I told you on Thursday, we could track submarines because they made a, what kind of field? Magnetic, yeah, yeah. But we kept losing them. They kept running in the mountains. We didn't know existed, and they get lost in deep canyons. We didn't realize that the oceans had all this remarkable topography out there. Why, wow. every ocean basin has a huge mountain ridge that stands over a mile high. It's offset by these other kinds of faults. The rocks are all made out of just one rock, basalt, black basalt. So different than the rocks on continents, where the rocks are really old, there's lots of granite and everything else. So in studying the oceans, because we were fighting a war, we had to map the topography of the oceans and study what was there. We found all this weird stuff. Two-thirds of the earth. We found all this weird stuff. Ocean ridges in every ocean. It's all basalt. The ocean crust is really thin. The continents, the crust is really thick. The continents are really old. <coughs> and also, I've told you that the earth is 4.6 billion years. The oldest rock is 4.0 billion. That's from the continent. You go out in the oceans, and the ocean crust is only young. More than 220 million. And it's youngest, the ages are symmetrical. Symmetrical to the ridges. What? What? So something's going on here. What would you do with this? The first step of the scientific method is just observation. They're making observations. What's going on here? Sir, I told you, did I not, that this planet is amazing. Everywhere you look, under every leaf, there's an incredible design, all right? Look at the mid-ocean ridge of the Atlantic coming right down, and at the very top of that ridge is a rift valley. <coughs> a valley at the top of the mountain, all over the world, they do this. And it gets offset, we call these transform faults, that's our third kind of plate boundary. So the oceans are spreading, we found. The oceans are spreading, they're moving. Wagner was right, come out of your coffin. The average rate of sea floor spreading, you've got to know, is six centimeters per year. There it is. Six centimeters per year. How much is that? Show me. Six centimeters per year. There you go. <laughs> centimeters? Not that big. It's all bad. Wow. Now, the Atlantic is actually slower. 
than the sixth average. I'm showing that Atlantic, but it's actually slower. It's down around three. And in the Pacific Ocean, it's up around 10 or 12. It's really moving. Wow. <coughs> Look at that. And it's young at the ridges. Here, this is age of ocean crust, color coated with bright yellow where it's young, getting older as you get away. There are some exceptions. There's what we call hot spot volcanic islands that pierce through. Hawaii is active today, but otherwise, the active part of the ocean floor is at the ridges. Look at the symmetry. This is weird. What a design. In every ocean basin, there is a mid-ocean ridge, which is the youngest. That's colored red, red here. And then it goes out to yellow and brown. That's getting older, okay, with the lightest hand, about 220, in every ocean. Look at the symmetry. Look at the Indian Ocean. Look at the symmetry. And what happened to the Pacific Ocean? We got all this on this side. Where's the other half in the Pacific? Where's the other half? Where's this on this side? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Subduction. Subduction. The Earth's ocean. No wonder the ocean crust is young everywhere. It's destroying its babies sooner after it forms it within a few hundred million years. Subducting it back down. I do not want to die at sea. <laughs> No, 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 no. I don't want to die in the ocean. Why? Because I'll drift out in a boat. I'll sink near the ocean floor. And invariably, all ocean floor goes to a subduction zone. And you go down, 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 <coughs> down to the core mantle boundary. Oh, no. I can't. I can't. <laughs> well, let's see. I like sunlight. So the mid-ocean ridges, let's look at those first. Here's the North Atlantic mid-ocean ridge. And most of the time, the mid-ocean ridges are underwater. Uh, average ocean uh, crust sea level is about 15,000 feet below sea level. But these mountain ridges rise up 10,000 feet high. 10,000 feet high, but they're still 5,000 feet down most of the time. But Hawaii, it comes on up to the top. Let's go there. Look at that. It's all basalt, and it's cracking, separating. It's rifting as it forms. Baby, look at that. Rift, rift, rift. Using a VW for scale, black basalt. That's what the ocean floor is made out of, a chance to see no land. It's rifting so fast. So the, all the oceans have this remarkable spreading ridge. It comes down, it splits, comes out of the Pacific, goes into the Atlantic, goes up in here, up through the North Pole. This side goes down, goes into the Indian Ocean. I'll show you in a moment. In and out of every ocean basin like a seam on a baseball. What's that about? Like a seam on a baseball. What a design. All right? And we, we take a submarine, a submersible called Alba, and we go down there. 5,000 feet down. Is there sunlight? No, it's pitch black and the water's cold, <laughs> frigid. It ought to be frozen ice, but it's under such great pressure. You go down there. And at the ridge, up the top of the ridge mountain, there is a valley. And you go down in that valley. You go down. What are those? This is an artist's drawing. Look at the smoke curves. <coughs> you find these huge hot springs. Do you like hot springs? Shall we go? Do you like a hot mud bath? Shall we go? There you are down at the bottom of the ocean. It's really cold and all of a sudden you walk up. It's warm. Ooh, it's warm. It's warm. I like it hot, mama. <laughs> and, and it's warm and it's thriving with life all around these smoker vent chimneys, not a bit of sunlight. You've got algae and bacteria and fungi and all kinds of viruses. And who's eating them? Worms. <laughs> Worms thriving, you know, at times getting barbecued by the hot water. <laughs> so the stages of rifting, we can look at any part of our earth and see all stages. Today, the western United States called the Basin and Range is extending, but it's not yet a plate boundary. It's extending Salt Lake City to uh, Taos, New Mexico. Look out. It's extending. It has earthquakes. Not yet a plate boundary. East Africa is rifting, but not yet a plate boundary. But that's the beginning from the Basin and Range of welding and extending to a rift valley. East Africa, look out. Will it keep going? Maybe and maybe not. And then finally, if it keeps going, 
you farm new ocean crust made out of basalt, you make a Red Sea or the Gulf of Aden or the Gulf of California, all right? There they are. And finally, 